The Massage Establishments Act regulates massage establishments by licensing the operators and imposing conditions on their activities. The aim is to prevent massage establishments from being used for vice activities or causing law and order problems. MHA has reviewed the massage establishment regulatory regime to ensure that it remains effective in the changing landscape. Under the enhanced regime, we will take tougher action against unlicensed massage establishments. There is a clear case for action. Between 2013 and 2016, there was a 40% increase in the number of unlicensed massage establishments detected by the police. Many of these were not, in fact, massage establishments, but fronts for vice activities. The proverbial wolf in sheep's clothing, or what in Chinese we refer to as gua yang tou mai gou rou. For licensed massage establishments, we will take a more calibrated approach. Today, we have about 1,200 licensed massage establishments that are sited both within residential and non-residential areas. About 300 or one quarter are found in HDB housing estates. They include reputable massage establishments that have been operating for a long time. The evidence is that there is a clear difference between licensed and unlicensed massage establishments. In 2016, police enforcement found less than 3% of licensed massage establishments to have vice-related infringements. This is significantly lower than the 40% of unlicensed massage establishments with vice-related offences. Even as we tighten the regulations on higher risk activities and take stricter and more punitive action against errant operators, there is room to lighten the regulatory burden for the vast majority of low risk and compliant operators who are meeting a genuine demand for massage services. This differentiated approach will also allow police to focus its resources accordingly. Given the substantial amendments to the Massage Establishment Act, the Ministry of Home Affairs will repeal the existing Act and re-enact it. All existing licenses granted under the current Act will continue to be in force, but they will be treated as granted under the new Act and subject to the new regulatory regime. I will first explain the provisions to strengthen the police's levers against unlicensed massage establishments. We will use a combination of measures to more effectively deter and penalise those who are involved in unlicensed massage establishment operations. Today, the penalty for unlicensed massage establishment operations is a maximum fine of $1,000. This is grossly insufficient compared to the profits that unlicensed massage establishments can make, especially by engaging in vice activities. Clause 5 of the bill increases the penalty for operating unlicensed massage establishments to a maximum fine of 10,000 or two years imprisonment or both. For repeat offenders, the punishment will increase to a maximum fine of $20,000 or five years imprisonment or both. The significantly higher fines and the inclusion of imprisonment as a punishment will be a stronger deterrent. If the unlicensed massage establishment also engages in vice activities, the operator can be liable for additional vice-related offences under the Women's Charter. The enhanced penalties will ensure that unlicensed massage establishment operators face serious consequences upon conviction. However, court proceedings take time, especially if the unlicensed operator claims trial. 
There have been cases of unlicensed operators blatantly continuing to operate even after being charged in court due to the lucrativeness of their illegal activities. To address such behaviour, Clause 19 will empower the Commissioner of Police to issue a premises closure order. This power will be used if the police have reasonable grounds to suspect that despite ongoing criminal proceedings, the operator continues to operate the unlicensed massage establishment. The premises closure order will require the unlicensed massage establishment premises to be vacated within a specified time and physically secured thereafter. If the order is not complied with, the police is empowered to take necessary steps or use reasonable force to enforce the closure of the premises. Under clauses 20 and 21, any person who breaks the lock or enters the premises without prior permission from the police will be deemed to have breached the order. The person could face a maximum fine of $15,000 or three years imprisonment or both. The premises closure order is intended to only prevent the continued operation of illegal activities and will not penalise usage of the premises for legitimate businesses. Clause 19 therefore sets out the circumstances under which the order will be lifted. In addition, under Clause 22, the accused may appeal to the Minister against the Commissioner's premises closure order, but the order will remain in force during the appeal process. The Bill will also deal with the upstream problem of irresponsible landlords who knowingly lease their premises to unlicensed massage establishment operators. We will require landlords to evict tenants who have been convicted of unlicensed massage establishment operations and provide them with early notice. The police will notify the landlord when their tenant is charged in court for operating an unlicensed massage establishment. This is a legal requirement under Clause 28. Landlords will therefore have no reason to be unaware of their tenants' illegal activities. After the tenant has been convicted of operating an unlicensed massage establishment under Clause 29, the landlord must require the tenant to hand over possession of the premises within a month. There is typically some time between the tenant being charged in court and conviction. As such, the early notification under Clause 28 will give landlords sufficient lead time to make the necessary preparations. We recognise that some tenants could be difficult to deal with and may not leave despite the landlord's request. In these cases, the landlord is expected to take the following steps to discharge his obligations under the bill. If the tenant refuses to hand over possession of the premises within a month, the landlord is empowered under Clause 29 to terminate the lease or tenancy without being liable for breach of agreement with the occupier. Thereafter, if the tenant still refuses to move out, the landlord should apply to the magistrate's court for a summary order for the delivery of possession of the premises. There will be penal consequences for the tenant if he refuses to vacate the premises. If the landlord has taken these steps, he will have fulfilled his obligations and no action will be taken against him. Otherwise, the police will take action against the landlord for the offence of allowing his premises to be used for operating an unlicensed massage establishment under Clause 5. This offence carries the same penalties as the offence of operating an unlicensed massage establishment. The second set of amendments will refocus the regulatory regime on high-risk activities and reduce the re regulatory costs on low-risk activities and compliant massage establishments. At the same time, we will enhance levers and powers available to the police to deal with the errant massage 
establishment licensees. The current definition of massage or special treatment under the Massage Establishments Act includes manicure, light treatment for hair removal, fish spas and baby spas. Such activities do not pose the same law and order concerns as traditional massage establishments offering body massages in private rooms. The Ministry of Home Affairs will amend the definition of massage so that these activities no longer require a license. This will reduce the regulatory costs for such businesses. However, if any person provides massage services under the guise of such low-risk activities, they will face the increased penalties for unlicensed massage establishment operators. We will also introduce a suite of measures to keep unsuitable persons out of the massage industry. Under the current regime, the licensing officer assesses the fitness and propriety of an applicant or licensee when deciding whether to issue or revoke a license. Under clauses 7 and 12, MHA will expand this assessment to include other relevant persons besides the applicant or licensee who can influence the decisions of the business. These relevant persons include the responsible officers of the business entity as defined in clause 2 and all persons with substantial interest in or have control or direction over the business. If the applicant, the licensee or relevant persons are not fit and proper, the licensing officer can refuse to issue a massage establishment license and revoke an existing one. This will reduce the risk of massage establishments being started or operated by persons who are unfit or improper but are hiding behind a veil of propriety. The police will publish the criteria and requirements for applicants, licensees and relevant persons on their website at a later date. Under Clause 11, the licensing officer can immediately suspend a massage establishment license when the licensee or, res or relevant person or a relevant person has been charged in court for serious offences that will be specified in the schedule of the Act. Examples of these serious offences include vice-related offences under the Women's Charter, as well as offences relating to trafficking in persons and organised crime. This allows the police to take immediate action to prevent the licensee from using the massage establishment premises for such serious crimes without having to wait for the potentially lengthy court proceedings to be concluded. Under Clause 12, when the licensee or relevant person is subsequently convicted of the scheduled serious offences, the licensing officer will then proceed to revoke the massage establishment licence. The licensee is also required to seek the licensing officer's approval before hiring an employee. Not doing so will be an offence under Clause 13. Employees who are not fit and proper will not be allowed to work in a massage establishment. The fit and proper criteria for massage establishment employees will be set out in the subsidiary legislation at a later stage. For example, if any employee has any involvement with vice activities or has been convicted of serious offences, offences such as outrage of modesty, he or she will not be allowed to work in the massage establishment. The licensing or employee, the licensee or employee may appeal to the minister against the licensing officer's decision, but the decision will remain in force pending the outcome of the appeal. We have also enhanced the police's powers to take swift and effective action against errant licensees. Clause 10 creates a new provision to allow the licensing officer to modify license conditions in order 
to intervene promptly against problems and disamenities associated with massage establishments. For example, if a licensed massage establishment poses law and order problems, the licensing officer may decide to curtail its operating hours for the remaining duration of its license term. Clause 10 prescribes the process for modifying license conditions, which is straightforward and I will not go into here. The police have encountered cases where massage establishments lock their doors to obstruct or delay enforcement. Clause 24 empowers licensing officers and police officers to enter massage establishment premises using necessary force and without a warrant if there is reasonable suspicion that offences under the Act are being or have been committed within. Clause 4 of the Bill allows the licensing officer to appoint suitably trained individuals such as auxiliary police officers or retired police officers as authorised persons. This will provide the police with deployment flexibility and allow them to con conduct more frequent checks. Authorised persons will be empowered under Clause 23 to enter and inspect massage establishment premises. Under Clause 26, authorised persons can request for records, accounts and other information relating to the massage establishment for purposes of compliance checks. Authorised persons, however, will not be given the more specialised powers that the licensing officer and police officers have. For example, powers of investigation and the new power of forced entry. Clause 30 protects licensing officers, police officers and authorised persons from personal liability as long as they have acted in good faith and executed their duties with reasonable care. Finally, we will also increase the penalties for regulatory breaches so as to deter and penalise errant licensed operators. The penalty today for all regulatory breaches is a maximum fine of $1,000. We will increase the penalty for regulatory breaches to a maximum fine of $5,000 for first-time offenders. Repeat offenders will face a maximum fine of $10,000 or two years' imprisonment, or both. As part of the review, MHA consulted the Spa Association of Singapore, the Spa and Wellness Association of Singapore, and the Real Estate Developers Association of Singapore on the proposed amendments. The industry associations and their members are supportive of the proposals under the bill. The bill allows tougher action to be taken against unlicensed operators and errant licensees who damage the image of the massage industry.